In yesterday's video, I said it's very important to have your own website or platform to link back to and to have your own email address and to have one place where people can go to find you. Today, I want to show you how to get your own domain, get a hosting account and how you can get started building your own website for pretty cheap, I would say. The first thing to think about is the domain name, I would say. Do you want your own name? Do you want a custom name? Do you want a generic name? You have to think about what is your preference there. I personally think you should at least get yourownname.com or if you have a different country ending, also your, your own name dot your country ending, for example, in Germany dot de. I would say that is kind of mandatory if at all possible. Of course, sometimes you have a name like John Smith or something, you probably will not be able to get the dot com, but maybe you can get something else like a slight variation or something added to your name, something different or in spelling or whatever you want. But finding a custom name is sometimes not that easy. And there are a couple tools out there that you can use. One of them, for example, is Domainer. I kind of come back to Domainer, which I also linked in the description below a couple times a year, just because I have some random ideas for domain names. I want to check the availability or also if there are any cool availabilities. For example, with Domainer, for example, with Domainer, you get a check of over 1,700 uh, top level domains. That means the ending like the .com or the .io. And there are actually really cool things you can do. For example, driftaway.coffee. If you want to do something cool like the sword game website, where they just have the swordgay.me to kind of use that as an alternative domain or maybe even your main domain. I think those are pretty cool and you can do very interesting stuff with those. And sometimes those are still available, but the normal domain like the .com is no longer available. So with the Domainer, you can check stuff like that. You can also find new ideas for domains. For example, if I want to create a new website uh, that is travel related and let's say I want to do a round the world trip and my name is Chris. So I could, for example, enter a world trip Chris. And then you get different ideas. For example, tripchris.earth, tripchris.world, crypt tripchris.global and those are kind of cool ideas I would say. Of course you get also the standard worldtripchris.com. I would say this is a great way to find ideas and to kind of test different things and as you can see here on the website the green ones are available and then you have the blue ones that are actually already taken which kind of makes sense like trip.earth or trip.global. Those make sense that they are already taken away. And down here at the bottom, you get those more interesting variations. For example, this world trip C dot H R I S. I would say that is too far out there. That is too custom. That is not really something I would suggest anybody to use because not just incorporating the top level domain, but also a folder kind of structure. I would say that is too much. I would never go that route. But in general, Domainer is a great tool. But if you Google domain name tools or domain name ideas, you will probably find a couple more tools that also do something like this. And I have linked the Domainer tool in the description below, as well as the other links that I will use in this video. The second alternative you have is that you go to some hoster where you actually can purchase domains and you can try to search there as well. And many of them actually also try to help you find the right domain for you. For example, by suggesting different endings or also different word variation. Let's say you want to use Namecheap, which is the domain register that I use. And I also have a link in the description below. The link to Namecheap is actually an affiliate link. So if you buy something on there, for example, hosting or a domain, I will actually get a small commission that will support me in making more of these videos. If you don't like that, just Google Namecheap and you will find it as well. So then you can just use it without having my affiliate code in there. But what Namecheap actually offers is also a domain search where you can, for example, type in the same thing that I just tried world trip Chris. And then you get all kinds of suggestions. In this case, the first thing that Namecheap does is just suggest different endings. In this case, the popular endings are all kinds of new endings like .news, .online, .club. And some of these domains actually have very interesting pricing for the first year. But with those pricings for the first year, you actually have to be a little bit careful because sometimes you get a domain for 88 cents in the first year, but then in the second year, it actually costs 30 or even 60 US dollars. So be a little bit careful there. I would personally always try to keep those costs low because they are yearly costs. 
Now, they are of course not monthly costs and in a year, 30 US dollars in a year is not all that much, but it adds up if you have many domains. Now, I would say that many of these domains are pretty new and they can be very interesting, especially if they fit your topic, for example, worldtripchris.design. If you're an actual designer, for example, that design ending might be very interesting for you. If you want to have a online store, this dot store domain ending might be very interesting. If you're vlogging, maybe the dot life is interesting. So there are actually a lot of very interesting ideas. Then you also have the new tab, which also offers many of these very new endings. And then you also have the 88 cent domains, which are the currently amazing 88s. So they have a very special offer there that the first year is just 88 US dollar cents. I personally would probably stay away from these, especially if they don't make sense for me. And also if the yearly price is too high. Last but not least, in the domain endings, you also have the standard endings like .com, like .de and stuff like that. These are very often already taken, but in this case, for example, worldtripchris.de is actually free. So that would make sense if I wanted to write in German, for example. I can also check the domain itself if I just type in here worldtripchris.com and it's actually free as well. And then lastly, there's also the suggestions that I mentioned in the beginning. This is kind of a tool that works similar to Domainer. So you actually get suggestions to mix and match different words or maybe trim some words or leave them out. These can be very interesting if you don't know yet what you're going for and if you have checked your other domain and th that's not available so you kind of can get new ideas there oftentimes i kind of brainstorm myself or with friends and then i have my ideas for myself and then i just want to check the availability of those op options i already have a domain purchased that i will use for this example that is a domain that I don't use any longer and it probably will expire in the next couple of weeks. But I will use it to show you how to set up WordPress and how to use the Namecheap interface. In your case, if you have chosen a domain, you would have to click this little cart icon and then you can add it to your cart. And from the cart, we will take the next step. As you can see here, I have chosen the worldstripchris.com. I can now select if I want to buy it for one, two or three years. I oftentimes instantly buy for two years just to be safe. I definitely check the auto renew because I want to be safe that now for the next year I'm building something and I don't want that to stop after one year and just because I forgot to renew it or something. They do remind you pretty often before it actually expires, but just to be safe I would always say auto renew here. Then you have the ICANN fee, which you cannot get around. It's just a fee for the kind of internet registry business stuff. Then you have the who is guard, which I would always enable and also auto renew. This is kind of a way to ensuring that you don't have to put any information of yourself into the domain who is information. So for example, you can hide your address in there. In Germany, that is kind of useless, more or less, because you already have to have a impressum or an imprint on your website where you have to have your own address or your business address in there anyways. So this is not that important, but I still like to keep it enabled to kind of make it not all that easy so if you don't know about the imprint or the impressum then you also will not be able to find my information and the who is information the premium dns service is something that i would not recommend to anybody who is starting out maybe it makes sense later but for the beginning it definitely not important now that the domain is in the cart and everything is ready there we have to choose a hosting so there are three options that i can think of right now you have the website hosting that you can do for example with namecheap here that is a shared hosting and it's managed and it's very easy to set up then you have host that you can do on your own server, which I do with a server from DigitalOcean. And then you have the option where you have a service that is, for example, wordpress.com, where you have a website and then you only need a domain to kind of put on top of that. In this video series, I am recommending the shared hosting option because I think it's the most versatile and still pretty easy to set up. Using your own server, like I do, for example, is something that you can do when you're bigger or if you want to really have control over everything. But there it's kind of necessary to also have knowledge of server hosting and command online tools and all kinds of things that you probably don't want to worry about. I myself don't use the name cheap hosting personally because I have the DigitalOcean server, but I use it in client projects and that's also where I see the performance and the quality of the hosting. And that's why I still recommend it and I feel comfortable doing so. Now on the card side here, Namecheap instantly offers to add a hosting package to your system. But I want to actually have a look on the different kind of hosting packages you can choose and then you can select one and then we can come back to the card later. 
So once you click on the hosting button up here, you can actually see that there are a couple different options, for example, the shared hosting, then you have the reseller hosting and the VPS hosting. This down here is something that I do kind of with the DigitalOcean server. The reseller hosting is actually if you create websites for clients and you want to resell hosting as well. And the shared hosting is the package I would recommend you to choose. Here you actually have different sizes and I would say for the beginning, it's absolutely okay to stick to the normal like value hosting. This is the kind of cheap option. The first year will be 9.29 in euros. In US dollars it might be a little different and that is in the US data center. If you actually want to go with the UK data center you can do that but that is significantly more expensive and overall I would say the US data center works great. In the second year however it gets more expensive and goes up to 36 euros per year. So if you just want to try it out in the first year it's about 10 euros and in the second year it's actually 36 euros so it gets more expensive but by then you should be more more successful, more settled in, and you actually have a kind of a platform there so that it still is a price that is pretty okay. The package itself includes 20 gigabytes of storage. You have unlimited bandwidth, so you can have as much traffic coming in and out as you want. And you can host up to three different websites on the package. So you can actually buy three different domains or even more and use those domains on that website package. So for example, you can have your own blog and personal site on there, and then you have a business or a different project that you want to have a different website for, and then you have the domain just pointed there, have the system set up to be a different website. So that way you only have those 10 years in the first year or 35 or uh, 40 euros in the second year. So we can add this to the card and then I can say I want to use a domain in my card. I want to get a free .website domain, also interesting, but I would not recommend the .website ending. You can purchase a new domain, you can use a domain I already own, and you can have a domain that you have at a different register. In this case, you would choose I want to use a domain in my card. If you have not chosen a domain yet, you can also purchase a new domain. I do this with a use a domain in my own name cheap system because I already have a domain and I just want to reuse that and I will remove the uh, world trip Chris domain. So as you can see here, we are back to the card and I have selected the value plan, which is about 10 euros in the first year and then it's 36 euros in the second year and on. And I have linked it to the domain universitychooser.com, which is the domain I mentioned in the beginning that will expire in a couple of weeks and I will not use it any longer. So I will actually remove this up here. But if you're setting up this completely new, I would definitely link the domain here to this value package. So once you have your order complete with the domain and the linked value package in hosting, you can just continue, finish the card, buy the package and you will actually get a couple of emails and then you will be able to log into Namecheap and do the setup process from there. So now the order is processing and I have to wait a short moment to set up the whole account system. And once the setup is finished, you will see an account like this and there you will see what you just bought. You can download a receipt and then you can just click here to manage the hosting package immediately. This will actually bring you to the domain list like so and then you can just select the domain you just purchased and click the manage button. Now I get all kinds of warnings here and for you this will be probably not the case because you will have the auto renew on the whois card and on the auto renew but for me this domain is actually something that is going to expire soon because I will not use it in the future. Now that we have set up the hosting you will have to make sure that the name server here is actually set to name cheap web hosting DNS and then you you can confirm that. This will actually take some time for the name server to get those informations and sometimes it also takes time till this kind of gets activated in the whole internet system because it is kind of propagating through different server systems. But once you have set up the web hosting DNS you can actually manage it through the cPanel and I will show you how that works. Now when you choose the products page on the domain you actually see the value hosting is added there. You also see the expiration and you definitely want to set that to auto renew as well. And here the auto renew is actually a little bit more important I would say than with the domain because if you don't auto renew here and it expires your data will be gone, your database will be gone, the whole website basically will be deleted and you will not be able to get that back. What we do here is click the manage button and on this managing area, you kind of see the auto renew, the server address that you have here. Then you also have the IP address, the data center, how much disk space is left, and then also how many domains you can host on this package. 
Additionally, in the bottom here, you also see the bandwidth usage that you have each month. It is unlimited, but it is kind of interesting to know how much data is going in and out of your website, because that kind of is also an indicator how many people visit your website. The CPU memory and virtual disk space is absolutely not interesting for the shared hosting. And the most important for our shared hosting is probably the disk space, but 20 gigabytes is plenty. And if you don't host any videos or uh, tons of photos, then the this is absolutely enough to host a couple of websites. To set up WordPress and email forwarding, we will actually be using the cPanel, which is a different administration panel for this web space. And you will have received an email with the login details, password, and username for the cPanel right after ordering the package. If you have not received that email yet, you may have to wait a little bit longer, but it will eventually arrive. If it doesn't, you can contact the name Cheap Support and they are super supportive. And I would actually recommend to go with live chat because they respond in a couple of minutes and that is really, really helpful. And you don't have to wait for emails going back and forth and you can actually chat with someone. So that's it for this video of setting up your domain and hosting. If you have any questions about all this, please leave them in the comments down below and I will try to help you as soon as possible. Also, in the next video, we will be talking about setting up WordPress and installing it with the cPanel and also have a first look into the WordPress back panel to kind of understand where to find what and where you can do different settings or publish a post and a page. And what's the difference, of course. If this video was helpful for you, please give it a like and also share it with someone who might need a website in the future. Also subscribe to this channel for more videos like this almost every day. And until tomorrow, bye.